Hello everyone, my name is Vivek Bajaj. For the benefit of people who don't know me, I am in market for almost 15 years now. I'm a chartered accountant, company secretary and an MBA from IIM Indore. And after that, I worked as an analyst, as a businessman, and as on date, I run one of the largest prop trading desks in India. I used to be a trader and now I am a passive trader and an active investor in the market. Friends, uh, this is a series of video by me. I call it Invest Shala and we have hosted this in Elon Markets, which is one of my venture. I have also created a tool called Stockage. A couple of you would be knowing about it. A lot of people call it Bloomberg for Retail Investor. Now, I'm recording this video, especially for people who are new into the market and who want to understand how to make money from market. This is a video, is a accumulation of my experience of being in the market for a long period of time. And over a period of time, I've done a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of new things, a lot of good things, a lot of right things. And what I've done is, as a combination of my experience, I have brought everything together and created a rule. And that rule will help you guys to truly, truly make money from stock market. If you follow that rule, trust me, you will be a much better market participant. Now, before I go to the rules and I call it a golden rule of making money from stock market, before I go into that, let me tell you one thing, which is very, very critical for all of you to understand that in stock market, there are two skill set, which is required. One skill set is more technical in nature, where you learn the whole science behind market research or market trading. Could be technical, could be fundamental, could be derivative analytics, any kind of study. And second is temperament, which is more of a soft skill in nature. Now you as a market practitioner, if you have to make some serious money for market, you need to have combination of both these to be called a successful investor or trader in the market. What I have done in this rule book, I have tried to give you more perspective on the soft skills, which is how to build a temperament in the market using certain rules, which would be very, very valuable to you. Because teaching technicals or teaching fundamental is relatively easier because there are a lot of theoretical concepts already uh, talked about and written about. But how do you build temperament? How do you build risk appetite? How do you build this soft skill of trading in the market? It's something, something very, very critical and not many people have talked about it. And this presentation is going to last for around 45 minutes. So make sure you watch this video till the end because this is going to be a life changer for you. I'm going to share with you the golden rule. And also I'm going to share with you certain case studies, certain specific stocks and how things have worked for me. And I believe that this thing which has worked for me can also work for all of you. So just need to pay attention, just need to follow what I'm saying. And trust me, you will be able to make money from stock market. Now, I am a very strong believer of this theory, the theory of circle of competence. You know, this theory was introduced by Mr. Warren Buffett a uh, couple of years ago where he said that ultimately, if you invest in stocks or sectors within which is within your circle of competence, you have a better chance of making money. So what is circle of competence? In a, in a very general parlance, if you talk about circle of competence is everything which you know. And beyond that are things which you think you know, but actually you don't know. Or maybe People want you to believe that you know, but you actually don't know. It can sound very weird, but just think about it. Give me a, I'll give you a minute to think about it. So circle of competence, for example, say I am part of a sector, say I'm part of an NBFC sector. So I understand the NBFC world better than anyone else, which is within my circle of competence. Say, for example, I'm working in a company which is in chemical sector. Chemical sector will come under my circle of competence because I am dealing with the chemical industry day in and day out. So anything which is comprehensible, which is easier for you to understand, which you can for sure surely say that, yes, this things work like this 
is within your circle of competence. Other things are largely influenced by other people, which you want to be very careful of. Now, I'm not saying that all the influences are bad. There are certain good influences as well as bad influences. It's important for us to remember the circle of influence also in our life. So the second important concept is what I mean, you should have a you should have a clear identification of the circle of influence. Now, you know, in this in this circle, if you see there is a circle of control and then there is a circle of influence and then there is a circle of concern. As it explicitly mentioned, the circle of control is something which you have a very strong control on. Circle of influence is when other people are trying to influence you. And there could be good influences as well as bad influences. And you are just trying to filter good versus bad. And the third is the circle of concern, which is like someone is trying to manipulate your mindset. Someone is trying to push things into your mind, which may not be very healthy for your profit making. And you would like to avoid such influences in life. Looks complicated, but it's a very, very simple concept. And the more we uh, understand this concept and define a rule book for ourselves as an individual, because my circle of competence will be very different from yours. My circle of uh, control will be very, very different from yours. So if you can define all these things as a proper rule book for yourself, you definitely will have a better chance of making money from stock market. Stock market is not a place where people gamble. That's a very, very big misconception people have. And maybe the world doesn't want you to believe that it's not a gambler's den. It's a proper place where you can apply science as well as art properly. And the more realistically you apply them, the more optimally, optimally you apply them, you will be able to uh, figure out what's what's around uh, the market. Now, what is circle of control? I mean, circle of competence, we all understood. There's something which we can understand. And circle of control is, you know, stock which are under your control. Things which are under your control. For example, if you are a promoter of a company, the company is under control. If you are a relative of a promoter of a company, it's under your control. If one of the promoters of the company is a school friend, it's under your control. <clears throat> I'm not saying that look out for insiders. No, I'm not. See, whenever I talk about anything, there could be two sides of the coin. Uh, the the positive side as well as the negative side. People can take due advantage of any other side of the life. But I mean, when you talk about control, that means things are pretty much under your control and anything which happens in the company or the sector, it's easier for you to comprehend the change or comprehend what could happen and which will lead to some kind of a uh, price impact in that stock market price. But the most uh, common form of circle of influence is the, is the positive influence which we get and the negative influences. And that can happen, say for example, you are part of a business as an employee or as a, as a, as a vendor, as a service provider, or it's part of your lifestyle. Say for example, you are a regular user of a, of a medicine or you like certain cosmetic brand and you are regularly using that. Or for that matter, you know, uh, I'll give you my example that I had, uh, I had twin boys. Uh, and uh, you know, typically when twins are born, uh, they're weak. Uh, so uh, doctor typically recommend them supplementary milk. So there is a brand called Nan, which has series of products, Nan, Nan 1, Nan 2, Nan Pro. And this brand is owned by a company called Nestle. Now, every time I used to buy, because I have to buy, I had to buy significant because of my, my twin boys. So the quantum was always high. So whenever I used to buy it, I used to multiply it by 10 times and buy equivalent shares of Nestle. Because my theory was very simple that if I am consuming it, the whole world is literally consuming it and they have a very, very high market share. And it's something which you can't avoid because you can charge people a lot of money showing them the well-being of their kids and their family. So <clears throat> Nestle was a great buy for me because I applied the identification technique from my own lifestyle. And that is why, that is what I promote every one of you to do. That look around your life, look around your lifestyle, figure out uh, in your business, which company, which sector can do well. Look out for a relevant social circle where you can get more information. Don't look out for tip providers. Don't look out for khabris. Look out for people who are relevant, whom you can talk about market, who have relevant understanding of uh, economy, relevant understanding of a particular sector. 
and then build that social connect because those are the guys who will give you good influences and there may be many guys who will be giving you bad influences and that actually becomes part of the circle of concern who are the guys who will who will give you bad influences whom you should be very wary of the operators people who are managing that stock maybe stand alone or maybe with the promoter of the company you need to be very careful of them the front runners they could be big institutions who want to buy but they want to do front running first or the people who have large conflict of interest could be some celebrity in a media platform could be someone in a twitter who has some position who but who wants you to behave in a certain way all these circle of concern should be should be clearly clearly identified and you need to be very careful about whom to trust as far as your right circle of influence is concerned right so first is your circle of competence which is you your own skill set and other is circle of influence which is like the third party who is trying to influence you in your decision making now for me the perfect equation the perfect recipe of this fantastic food is when you identify businesses which are within your circle of competence and you identify stocks which has good influences stocks which are under your control or stocks you believe that they are under your good influences eventually that combined will create to wealth will generate will lead to wealth creation otherwise it's very difficult to make money sustainably over a period of time for market especially if you are investing in the market so from a wealth creation perspective especially an individual retail investor the idea should be to eliminate stocks not to select stocks and the more you look around your own lifestyle you will be able to identify stocks which are relevant and you only stick to the stocks which are relevant for you now i want to give this rule to you and this is my rule which i have devised and which has come over a period of time there is no uh, guru who has you know kind of defined these rules but this is my rule which i want to give to you and all of you who are first timers or who are still struggling in the market i give you this 10 10 10 rule the rule says that you take 10 stocks for 10 months with a maximum loss of 10% of your capital per month and capital means the allocated capital for equity trading or investing and these 10 stocks could be every you can have all 10 stocks together or preferably take one stock at a time so take one stock in january then in feb add one more stocks so you have two stocks in march add one more stocks so you have three stocks so by doing this at the end of 10th month you will have specialization in 10 stocks right and then if you lose maximum 10% per month i mean you can't lose 10% every month then literally in 10 months you will be done and maybe you'll not have enough confidence inside you so ideally you should always look out for a small plus maybe first month two month you will have losses but from third month you will start identifying ways to generate that plus at the end of the month it can be as small as 2% of your allocated capital but still a plus always adds to the confidence right so this is this is the model which i prescribe to all of you who are especially youngsters and who have come into the market for the first time because this is what i've been following i have a list of around 25 stocks for myself you know 20 to 25 stocks which i have built over a period of time and my focus is always around those 20 25 stocks you know for example i can't understand pharma stocks i can't understand pharma sector not that i am not intelligent but pharma is something which is beyond my understanding so i i don't have any stock on the pharma side so i'm going to i'm going to share with you some case studies some examples some stocks which i follow and i'm going to also show you some live cases live um, what has happened with these stocks in last 3 months why these 3 months because i i actually don't like to post too many things in public forum but last 3 months i decided that to explain things to public in large one needs to also share few trades and that's what i have been doing for the last 3 months and uh, that's that's the journey which i want to share with all of you and learn from this journey because if you learn it the way i want it to learn then you don't need anyone else you don't need a broker you don't need a, a celebrity with celebrity you don't need people like me to tell you what to do you will be becoming independent and you will have the capability to earn on your own all right so let's let's go ahead let's let's take one case uh, and um, let's let's uh, we'll have we'll cover around 9 to 10 cases so that you get an understanding of what what my mind says and how you can meet, uh, map your mind with my mind my first case is lance industries 
Now, Reliance is something which everyone has been talking about, and now everyone knows the business model. And actually, that makes me more worried now that everyone knows about it. But I, when I identified Reliance almost <clears throat> three years ago, when I was doing seminars all around the country, and I was talking to people about the kind of business model Reliance could potentially have. And this revelation came when I first took the Reliance Geo connection three years ago. And the moment I connected Reliance with my my telephone, uh, with my mobile phone, and the internet connection which I got, I got zapped with that internet connection. I've never experienced that kind of an internet ever in my life, and I instantly thought that this can't be an ordinary infrastructure. It has to have uh, some bigger game plan which uh, Mukesh Bai has, and he can't be just providing an internet at a discounted rate. There is something bigger than that. My conviction for Reliance actually laid stronger after Mukesh Bai made the statement that uh, data is the new oil. Now that that for me was the the ground breaking statement made by Mukesh Ambani that uh, that that the company is now moving towards a data company. It's no more a resource company. It is no more an oil company. It is no more a retail company. It is no more a just a mere telecom company. It's actually a data company. So for me the logic was. You know, if uh, the largest data company in the world, Google, that time was around eight hundred billion dollar valuation, and Facebook, which has almost a five hundred billion dollar valuation, and Reliance is the company which is like Reliance means India. India is means Reliance. So it has it had hundred almost eighty ninety crore of uh, billion billion dollar valuation um, at that time, and they had this uh, uh, telecom license, they had this oil company, oil business, they had this retail business, they had petrochemical business. So many businesses they had with only eighty to ninety billion dollar valuation. That's uh, got my attention, and I told people that uh, this company will definitely grow. It's not possible for this company to stay low because the data business which they intend to do and which they eventually will monetize in future is going to be far far bigger than what we can think of right now. So with that theory, with that logic in mind, with that theme in place, I started uh, figuring out when to enter this stock. Now, friends, that's where the catch is. You may know that a stock is good, but there's no point in investing or uh, uh, putting your money in that stock at any price. You only want to invest in that stock when you believe that the stock is has a strength. And when will the stock have a strength? When there are bigger guys who are always ready to buy that stock, even if the market is going down. And that's where my lovely, my favorite indicator, relative strength, come into the picture. Now, what does relative strength do? Relative strength is nothing. It's a very simple indicator which says that if <clears throat> market has gone down by ten percent, and if Reliance has gone down by only eight percent, that means the stock is showing strength. And I will only enter the stock which is under my theme, and I'm convinced with the theme if the stock is showing a relative strength. The moment stock sh start showing sustainable relative weakness, mind my words, sustainable relative weakness, I will exit that stock. So let's take an example of Reliance. So on 17th of March 2020, I I posted this on my Twitter, and you know I'm I'm saying this because I have recorded everything in Twitter, so you can actually check whether I whatever I'm saying is right or wrong. But that's that's the beauty of today's presentation is that I, I whatever I'm saying I'm actually doing it, and you can actually know exactly that yes this guy has done it. So 17th of March when the Reliance price was 1028, I said that Reliance is going to outperform Nifty because it's showing phenomenal strength, and uh, the theme is intact. I love that theme. And that time there was already Grapevine started uh, working on that they will dilute some stake to someone uh, uh, for their geo business because their oil business stake dilution to Aramco was not happening. So there was already a Grapevine happening. So I thought it's a great price to buy. So I I took a position there. Okay, but the um, uh, but the but the market went down, and this was a time when COVID uh, news break and everything was at its peak. So market went down significantly. In fact, Nifty went down to as high as thirty five percent from its high. Uh, but still, Reliance was not going down, and you know I have written in my tweet that the relative strength of this stock is so strong that this stock is not going down. So whenever market reverts back, this is going to be the first stock which will revert back. You know I've used this term called. Reliance fat jayega. If market if RSI goes above fifty, that means relative strength index of Reliance vis-a-vis -vis its momentum, current momentum, it goes above fifty, Reliance fat jayega. 
So from 930s, actually next day it went up to as high as 1030. You know, I'm not saying this that, see I was correct, see this is, I, I don't have that nature of telling people, Dek, dekho, main sahi ho gaya, main sahi ho gaya. point is that because I had this conviction on this talk because of the theme it stock had, I always knew that this stock uh, would give me a good return when the market recovers and it did. So on 25th March it went uh, to 1030. Then 7th of April, the stock price went up to 11.40. Why? Because market also recovered, market was stable and this stock was continuously performing well because of its relative strength. And look at the volumes at the lower level. Always if you see there are volumes at a lower level and the RSI, RS, RS, relative strength, not RSI, relative strength is showing a positive direction. That's where you would like to buy that stock. See, I have not done any deep fundamental research. Neither I have done deep technical research. What I am doing is identifying a theme and figuring out whether that stock is following a relative strength or not. And I am just entering the stock till the theme is intact. On 20th of April, uh, I posted a trade on Stockage Club where uh, we are like-minded people who discuss ideas and we, we, we share ideas with people. So the trade was I buy Reliance and sell Nifty when the price was 1250 because above 1250 I got more conviction that yes this is a perfect trade for derivatives. Now I run a two different portfolio. One is for my uh, delivery based activity where I prefer to do delivery based activity more actually. And um, my derivative is relatively lesser trades because uh, you know I, I have done derivative fair bit in my life and now I have reached a stage where I actually don't want to use derivative too much for my trading. So. Whenever I see a pay trading opportunity, that means buy one and short the other, then I use a derivative contract. So buy Reliance, sell Nifty was my trade on 20th of April. And uh, 22nd of April, this this uh, mother of all news came that Facebook is going to buy Reliance Geo Stake. Now, you know, market is always, always smart. Market always look at the future and market is seeing that there is something cooking there. And that's why market already increased the price from 1100 to 1250 but then it was a very very pleasant surprise so what market again rewarded that news and the price went up to 1350 that is where i thought that um, maybe this news is already there in the market no point in continuing with the derivative trade so i squared up my derivative trade i booked up my profit and uh, but i continued keeping my investment trade because i thought reliance as an investment is a perfect investment because my theme was intact and the price in cash market was always showing me relative strength. So when the price went up to 1360, that was the time when I squared up my position. And I mentioned this in my Twitter on 22nd of April. And you know, 22nd April, someone who attended my Delhi seminar three years ago, he reminded me that said, you did talk about this three years ago. And, and I said that, yes, I, I do remember this. Thank you for remembering me. So it was a very, very nice experience that people do remember the words which you have already narrated. But you know, 24th of April, look at what Reliance did, 1500. I, I was very surprised with this move. Being a frontline company moving so fast was very surprising for me. But I'm not complaining because I am still holding on to that cash market position of mine. Although der derivative position I squared up and they still outperformed Nifty. But I'm happy that I, I made money and I'm not regretting. Uh, the biggest regret is when you lose money. But when you make money and you regret, that's okay. You should accept that regret. On 23rd of June, market the price went up to 17.28. Oh my God, look at this moment here. Yeah. In two months, the stock has made the killing. Yeah. Why? Why was I able to participate in this stock? Is because A, I was convinced with the theme. B, I was looking at my indicator relative strength, which was always telling me that there's nothing to worry, this stock still has a strength. And every time a new breakout was happening in the stock price, I was trying to increase my position in this stock. So in 1728-30, I, I saw that this stock is now getting tired. Probably this stock will try to now correct a bit. So I've just exited the stock for the time being. And uh, I intend to re-enter the stock at around 1600 levels because that's where I see a lot of demand is still there. And uh, maybe if relative strength also becomes stronger there, then probably that will become a good idea to enter the stock. But right now, I feel that I've made my money in Reliance and I'm just moving out to identify other opportunities. So what's the learning for us? The learning for us is that A, identify a theme. B, 
the stock should show a strength c always follow whether the theme is intact and follow the price if the price continues to show strength continue your position the moment price shows you some kind of a weakness you may prefer to exit for a shorter time but always keep that stock as part of your watch list because any time if the stock starts showing you strength once again that's a great idea for you to enter that stock let's see a few more cases uh, that case 2 is atel now on 25th of march i tweeted that uh, atel after uh, reliance i think the next stock to watch is bharti atel because so i am a user of atel for almost 10 years now and i'm pretty satisfied user of atel very honestly so i love their internet plan which accrues the internet uh, balance to the next month whereas reliance doesn't do that and i don't like that theory because reliance just want us to consume lot of data on the same day whereas atel is saying that it's your property you can postpone it to next month it's okay it's fine so i i i have retail so uh, and i always believed in this company it's a good company good service uh, so i was figuring out when to buy and now because uh, it was literally a duopoly in the market because vodafone is uh, almost out of out of action and then reliance jio and atel so both together will kind of create a duopoly so the pricing advantage will always be there with the company so with those simple common sense logic i I identified this company at 416, and I posted on 22nd, 25th of March. And you know, 26th of March, the price actually went up by 11%. Uh, either someone is looking at my tweets, which I don't think so. I'm a very small guy, but definitely, uh, I'm I'm probably timing my moves very well because I'm I'm reading continuously, and I'm trying to uh, discuss few ideas with few people, and I can see that those ideas are becoming more logical. and friends it's not rocket science not that i'm qualified that's why i able to do it it's a very simple common sense like activity so even you want you can do it it's just that you need to get into this habit of identifying themes not into habit of identifying stocks okay 19th may i got a um, tweet from kush the very that there is some major delivery based action which has happened in atel and atel went up to as high as 582 so just imagine 416 420 to 582 what a lovely move the stock is also given and as i saw last on 24th of june the stock price is around 557 550 uh, i see the demand zone is around 540 the moment the stock crosses below 535 i will exit the stock so Enter at around 420, 425, and exit at around 535. Not bad. Why I was able to do it? Repeat the same thing. Because I understood the theme. Because I followed the strength of the stock, and because I was tracking what the bigger guys are trying to do in the stock. Because the moment bigger guys are still there in the stock, you would like to continue. If the bigger guys have exited the stock, you would like to exit the stock. Third case is BSC. <clears throat> Now, why this came into the picture again? because of my background of financial market and we are member of the national stock exchange so we understand nsc has the monopoly in the derivative segment but bsc is not very far in terms of building the whole ecosystem of financial market so their bsc star platform is actually very well they they are almost uh, have a monopoly in mutual fund transaction processing and then they recently got the license to introduce uh, insurance just like they have done uh, in the mutual fund space so i believe uh, bsc could be a good candidate um, at that time when the price was low and the most critical thing was i was looking at dividend stocks and i created a video also about the dividend stocks you will be able to see that link of the video below this video i was very interesting video which i <coughs> recorded where i identify stocks where there is high dividend yields and they have cash in their books and they have made money over a period of the last couple of quarters so there is a high chance that they will continue with the dividend payout <coughs> and bsc was one of the stock which i identified and i posted on 12th of april the price was 345 and these were the stocks which i identified as part of my delivery working and on 17th of april all of these stocks actually went up significantly on that particular day and on following days as well the uh, market was actually very down and very dull so people thought that maybe safer havens like a dividend paying stock could be a good idea to invest for a very shorter period of time see i'm not asking you to hold on to these stocks because you'll be getting dividend no idea is that if the dividend yield is high at this price most likely the stock will not stay at that price 
and it will go up sell the stock the moment it goes up i am not asking you to buy this stock and stay forever because delivery uh, dividend yield is not only an indicator of receiving dividend but also an indication of the price so because the price is low that's why dividend yield is high and the moment a price goes up by say 15 20% you are done you exit that stock and move on to the next stock so you see <coughs> bsc anyways it was not just dividend it was the business model and the whole uh, ecosystem of financial market getting uplifted because of trade from home i thought that bsc could be a good candidate to keep for a longer period of time and it's not trading at around 450ish level i think this stock still has potential to give me more return but 500 is a very very strong uh, hurdle for this stock so i'm just thinking whether i should retain it or not but most likely if it goes uh, below this 450 445ish level then probably i will exit this stock as well because i have made my money and my theme of building my position based on the dividend yield as well as the uh, the business model of bsc i pretty much think that the theme is still intact but i have made my money so i don't mind exiting that stock uh, with the kind of money which i have already made <coughs> fourth case is icic securities again very very logical driven from my circle of competence is basically understanding the financial market space i thought that because you know there is work from home there is learn from home and there is trade from home so all the broking firms has enjoyed have enjoyed the benefit of trade from home and the top broking firm the discount broking firms they have really really killed it because they were ready with their ecosystem at the right time but they were not listed unfortunately and i didn't like five paisa too much because they are the only one listed but they are loss making entities at that time i didn't like them so i thought icic securities is the only listed integrated service provider and that's what i have written here that since the top those discount booking firms are not listed and since i see icic to be the most integrated service provider i would prefer to buy icic securities so on 16th of april i actually identified icic securities around 328 level someone was buying the stock at 320 level someone was very aggressively buying the stock so if you look at the volume and look at the delivery data at 320 someone was continuously coming and buying the stock so it also gave me a confidence and whenever the stock was giving a breakout i was doubling up my position so i had a good position in the stock and i shared this in public forum it's not that uh, i am saying this now and i have not done that Uh, so 20th of april the price actually from 325 uh, 328 it went to 350 uh, then 360 on 30th of april then 8th of may it went up to 400 right and today the stock is the stock is trading at around 470 480 level and my theme is still intact that yes brokers are going to get tremendous benefit out of this up full up a flow of new talent into the market new industry uh, new investors in the market and this stock is going to get the large share of the benefit although there are competition from discount booking firms but i believe because of their integrated solution of the pedigree of icica this stock will remain a favorite stock for a long period of time again you can see at 500 this stock has certain hurdle you know till relative strength is not giving me a negative indication and the stock is not breaching its support level i'm holding on to this stock but the important point is not that whether i am holding on to this stock or not the important point is how did i identify and what did i do after i identify this stock that thought process you have to understand and this is purely because of my circle of competence that i was able to identify do not rely on me figure out your circle of competence figure out your influences and get the best stock out of your teams case 5 is sgfc life and this is a weird stock it may not have given me that kind of a return but my idea was that because of covid so much of negativity people will now spend more money in insuring them further so i would assume that a lot of people will come for insurance especially sitting at home people typically go for these kind of uh, activities so i thought sgfc could be a good buy because they are leaders and i love sgfc group so uh, it is no there was no second thought on which stock to buy when it comes to insurance so at 486 i identified but the stock went down also and it showed a weakness i had to square up my position at a lower level but then again the stock gave a breakout i again participated and today the stock is trading at around 517 520 level uh, 525 level which is a good level and it is building a base for itself if you see there is a uh, higher lows and higher highs been built 
and there is an upward trend line. So I believe that this stock will not go below 490, 485. And uh, uh, that's my stop loss because that's, that's my uh, literally the cost price. And I believe this stock after it goes above 445, 450, this will give a breakout. And there's a potential of this stock giving me another 10 to 15% return. Okay. Case 6 is Sera, which has not worked in favor of me because again, more of a uh, sanitary and cleanliness and because of COVID and other things, now government will also try to spend the money in making uh, the environment clean, the processes clean, uh, the toilets clean. So I thought Sera is a major leader in the, uh, in the uh, bathroom sanitary wares. I thought that they could be getting the benefit out of it and it's a local Calcutta company and I loved, I like the way they work, they're very good and I saw there was a delivery based activity in this company so I, I, I talked about this company and at 2185 I figured out uh, to enter the company. The company has not done well, the stock price has been hovering around 2200 to 2250 although it went, it won, immediately it went up to around 2400. Uh, but I'm still holding on to this stock. Let's see if uh, whenever there is recovery and people will start investing further to build their house, I think Sarah could get some benefit. Uh, but I have a very strict stop loss in this stock because predominantly this stock is not performed and its relative strength is also not great. So it was more of, I would say, gut impulsive buying. And you know, whenever you do that without your rule, you land up not making money out of the stock. So this is my negative impulse activity which led to no money making from this particular investment. <clears throat> now case number 7, Bajaj Finance. This is also a very very interesting case. You know Bajaj, you know I was, uh, I was, uh, I, um, a TV in my house it got, it got uh, uh, corrupt and I was supposed to buy a new TV. So and when I was placing an order online for the new TV I saw that there are multiple EMI options and a lot of EMI, a lot of platforms actually have Bajaj Finance very deeply integrated. So I thought that because of this COVID, home automation will become a very big thing. People would like to upgrade their routers, upgrade their AC, people would like to keep the house neat and clean and more automated so that when they are working from home or when they are staying at home, they should not feel the difference between work from home and the work from office. So that's that was the logic when I thought that if consumer durable demands goes up in India, Bajaj Finance is the company which is well placed to take advantage of that demand. So you know the price of that stock was around 2000 uh, on 21st of May. I tweeted that uh, in 5 years we will laugh that 2020 happened and this stock was available at this price. So the price went down further to 1895. Um, so yes, I did build a position at a higher level and I did a position at a lower level also because you know when I'm convinced with a theme, then I start building on small, small, small position and when the tide turn and the stock shows a relative strength, then I jump on to build a very, very strong position, large position. So I saw that on 25th of May, there was a delivery based activity and in stockage actually you can see very, very nicely the delivery based activity in a stock. So you see there was a delivery based activity and I said that the Friday's lows of 1865 is a very crucial and maybe market will not see that level again and this is what it happened. The price today, uh, it went up on 3rd of June, the price went up to around 2500 and as, as we speak, the price is almost 3000 rupees, which is like almost 35 to 40% appreciation from the lower level. Again, one more case uh, before we end this, uh, 5 paisa. You remember I talked about ICIC securities and why I believe that the broking business could be major beneficiary. So after ICIC securities went up, I said that maybe probably now 5 paisa will also see some interest because this year I believe they will they will make money. Uh, since then they have, they have not made money and it could be a turnaround year for them and uh, promoter has also increased the stake. So because of this factual information at 189, I entered the stock. And uh, the stock, I don't know what happened. The next day, the stock went up to 220. Someone must have read my Twitter. And, um, you know, and the stock currently right now is trading at around 250 rupees. So actually went up further to 260 and then it corrected to around 240. So from uh, 190 to the 240, 260, it's not a bad movement in a period of one week. It doesn't happen that way. But still, once you have a conviction of a theme, it's not very hard for you to uh, put money in the stock 
and obviously i have always told this that strength of the price is a very important confirmation even though the theme you know is correct but then lot of people would be knowing that theme until as the stock remains strong and that only gets reflected because they an operator or a bigger guy have entered this stock and they want to continuously buy this stock if the strength is strong there is no harm in continuing with the stock for a longer period of time considering the theme is intact the last case is godrej consumer which i identify very recently i saw that there is a fair bit of delivery based activity the price is outperforming and godrej consumer is one of those fmcg companies who are not just pure play fmcg they are also into very modern fmcg goods like for example good night and other things and i thought uh, they are very 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 innovative in bringing or introducing new product into the system so again this is this is more of a very short term play from my side that if i get 10% move in this stock i will move out this is not a one of those stocks because you are expensive stocks so you don't want to keep it at a higher price if the price corrects to around 500 525 then you to want to build more but these are very small positions which i have started building in this stock and the price uh, 662 i've entered 670 was the last in 24th of june and yesterday uh, on friday i checked the price was around uh, 680 85 rupees so stock is pretty good uh, showing strength and the logic of uh, fmcg consumption story with the new uh, varied kind of product is still there in this company so i hope uh, they continue to do well i have built a very small position i will increase my position once it gives a major breakout and uh, if suppose it goes down then i'll be happy to square up my position because my position anyways is a very limited position so you know friends uh, this is by and far my journey last 2 3 months and it has been quite rewarding and i think i'm i'm uh, over a longer period of time i have seen that this this model of uh, the steps which i follow in participating in the market has been working well and i would seriously suggest all of you to look at this model that you first identify a stock theme and that can happen around your circle of competence and circle of influence then you find whether the stock is showing strength or not and you enter with big money only when the stock is showing a very strong strength or if the stock has started showing weakness you can exit for the time being and wait for the new momentum towards upside to come and you enter again um uh, always look out for an entry price and if the theme is intact it's part of your watch list if the theme is not there you exit the watch list you remove the stock from the watch list because the principal theory of circle of competence is the most important theory if you understand this sector if you understand the stock if you understand the working of that stock then only you are invested in the stock otherwise you are not interested in putting your hard hard earned money in that stock All right, friends. Uh, so this is uh, in from my side. I hope you like this video. Uh, <clears throat> I am available on my Twitter handle. I do share uh, ideas in my Twitter. I'm not one of those guys who share too much ideas. If I feel any idea is to be shared, I share maybe ten ideas in a month, not more than that. I would also suggest you that restrict yourself to those ten stocks if possible for some time, and let let us build your temperament. Let us know the art of. learning market and practicing in the market first and then we go big time because we are not in a hurry abhi to market pe aaye hain so we still have time to look at the market and i'm sure that you'll be more confident person if you spend more time in the market and analyzing the market the way i want it to be i hope you like this video um, i hope you like my uh, invest shala series keep uh, keep a uh, track on me uh, subscribe my channel elan markets and uh, press a bell icon whenever i launch a new video you are going to know about it and do watch all my videos because they are very very useful videos for you thank you bye bye